I've now. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Oh, guys, I've been trying to figure out how. Oh, look, there we go. There's a filter. Is that the one you like? Hi, everyone. I say hi, everyone. There's one person. No, that one makes me look too, too, you know, done. This one for me. You guys, this is so cool that you can go live and look completely like a different person <laughs> uh, with these filters. It's pretty ridiculous. Hi everyone. So anyway, it's pretty ridiculous that I've chosen to use one. Since I'm a new mom, you know, the time is limited. Anyway, I thought I would go live. Well, okay, let's just first acknowledge that I was late for my live, even though I did full on countdowns, but I'm a new mom, so my brain is very uh, confused. We are gonna go live with Eddie in a few minutes, but I thought I would go- Ricardo. Ricardo's first? Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. Lily, don't know what I'm doing. We're going live with Ricardo first. And um, for those of you who are tuning in and don't know who Ricardo's, Car C C Ricardo is, someone just said Scorpion. Um, we're not here to talk about Scorpion, I'm sorry. Ricardo is um, one of my castmates on my new show, Country Comfort. It's been out for about a month and a half and we just thought we would do some fun fan interaction. Hello from Germany. So um, I'm going on this for a few minutes before so I can get people on. But yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about all things country comfort and maybe some things that uh, are not country comfort that Ricardo has, can tell us about. He was on a show on Netflix called, what was it called? Ma Be Beach something. He'll tell us about it. Malibu. Malibu Rescue. That's what it was. Um, does he know that we're live? <clears throat> well, he's supposed to go live at 1.30. Okay, so it's one twenty-seven. It? My hair looks beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's truly just this filter that I'm using. What is this filter that I'm using? It's this girl named Agnes. <laughs> she has this crazy beautiful filter that, um, my piano's here. You should tell everybody to watch the show. Yes. Well, so for those of you who are just joining, we are going to talk about all things country comfort. I'm curious to see if anyone's joining who hasn't seen the show, you can Stream it on Netflix right now. Did you do your own hair today? Yes, I did. I did a quick iron through it. Um, and uh, yeah, so all things country cover. My show is, I should say our show, is a little country show about this girl who wants to be a country star and she gets dumped by her boyfriend. Well, he actually doesn't technically dump her. He kicks her out of the band that they've been working on for years and years and years and replaces her with a younger, more beautiful, blonder lead singer. And so she is in complete distraught, complete, completely distraught and she decides to get in her car and start driving. This is all the, the pre stuff that <clears throat> you don't get to see the beginning of the series. She gets in her car, starts driving, singing to herself. Um, her car breaks down and she is in front of this ranch and she knocks on the door. It's a big storm happening. And the door opens to the lovely Ricardo, who um, is plays one of the many children that my character becomes a nanny to. You ship Bailey and Bo? I do. So that's kind of the, before you see Bailey come into the picture, that's what happens before. It's like the nanny. It's like the nanny. Exactly. Well, I don't know for people who are younger don't know. Where did you find this filter? I don't know. It was just available as soon as I went live. That was exactly what was available. <laughs> I'm serious. It's just like that was what came up. Agnes. Okay, let's go live. Okay, we're gonna go live. So how do I find this? His request. I know. I see it here, but I don't see him yet. I can see all the people on live. They're probably going. What is she saying? I don't see him yet. Do you see him? I don't. Ricardo, if you're on, um, send me your request again. Or add a comment. And or add a comment and then I can just view request. How come people are requesting to join live with me when I didn't ask them to? Everybody wants to go live. I know. I could actually do some fan interaction. I don't see you yet, Ricardo. Um, should I request him? Yeah. Yeah, Ricardo. Where are you? There you are. One second, guys. 
There you are. Hey, what's up? Hi. How are you, Kat? I'm really good. I'm a little bit, um, you know, mommy brain frazzled. Are you there? <laughs> All good. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. I said mommy yeah. brain frazzled. Did you give me the questions? Yeah. Oh. Question. I have the voice of God over here that's going to kind of give us some questions to ask you. Sounds good. Looking forward yeah? to it. So yeah. The fans asked. The fans asked, Ricardo. What was okay. it like filming during COVID? What was it like filming during COVID? We could both talk about that. Yeah. So um, filming during COVID was interesting. You know, we like, you know, Kat, we started off the beginning of the year. The first four episodes we shot like regular. But then uh, we had to stop halfway through. And when we came back, it was, uh, you know, it was just glad. I was just glad that we were back. And yeah. we had to do a whole bunch of protocol and stuff. But it was everything was worth it, you know, and everyone was safe. Yeah. Well, so we had four episodes that we did before we even knew about this pandemic, right? Yeah. Um, and it was just like life is totally normal. And then remember when Jamie, our co-star, Jamie, mm -hmm. uh, Jamie Mann, who plays, uh, what's his character's name? I'm so Brody. Sorry. Brody. <laughs> he uh don't get mad at me karen <laughs> karen our showrunner is probably watching i don't remember anything <laughs> except for my lungs jamie remember he had a cold on the like the last week before we shut down and we started hearing rumblings of covid and we were all like, afraid to I, I mean i especially was very afraid of him it's <laughs> like don't get near me yeah yeah um so we had four episodes of totally normal live audiences because we're on a sitcom for those of you who have seen the show but maybe don't know what that format is like, you have live audiences every Friday night. And then we got shut down like for six months. And then I came back pregnant. And right, I came <laughs> yeah. back pregnant. We had some changes there and totally new protocols, masks. The only time we saw each other's faces when we were rolling. So it was kind of wild, right? Yeah. Wait, how many months pregnant were you when we got back? Because I, I was, did not know. I, did I not. was, well, yeah, I tried to keep it on the down low i was probably i think i was almost five months pregnant so i was like four and a half by the time, by the time we finished i was six months pregnant so i was just like really popping towards the end yeah <laughs> in the beginning i'm wearing all these like skimpy outfits little midriff showing then the clothes just got more and more baggy and the colors got darker <laughs> yeah. they did a really good job covering it though no they did a great job yeah, I, okay. I, like I said, so, I want to show question. for Ricardo. It says, hi from Argentina. I would love to hear you speak Spanish. Ooh, yes. So t tell us your tell us your your um, your background. Uh, well, my background, both of my parents are from Nicaragua. Si sí, hablo español. Um, mi padre Ooh. es from Nicaragua y amo a mi comunidad latina. So, yeah, I just, I speak Spanish for sure. I Actually, Spanish is my first language. But, you know, yeah. it's weird because... Since I've lived in the United States, like, all, all my life. I was born in Miami, but I grew up in Georgia. Like, it's interesting, like, you actually start to lose it if, since you don't practice it. And so, right. since everything, I talk English most of the time. I'm starting to lose it. But I got to practice it, for sure. Someone <laughs> said, shut up, he speaks Spanish. It's a real, it's a real plus. <laughs> yeah, Especially, you have that beautiful, that beautiful accent. Yeah, we're going to have you sing something for in Spanish for us. So yeah. Actually, one of the other questions is that are there, are there also um, singers, the children on the show? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. So this is the great thing about our show is that we're a little comedy, but all of our cast members are singers. Like you play the guitar really well, uh, you sing really, really well. Uh, I remember when we tested, we screen tested together. That's right. And you were playing. We sang together. Remember? Yeah, I know. And it was crazy because we obviously didn't practice at all, and we just like we were grooving. We were grooving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have a little go-to Spanish song that you like to, you know, sing for the ladies? Man, that's a tough one. Um, like Besame Mucho or something? <laughs> <laughs> I like, um, I honestly, I like songs like from this Mexican band called Mana. Which okay. Is, uh, they have a lot of, they're like kind of rock, Spanish rock. And so they have, um, and in Muey de San Blas, which is one, one of my favorite songs. Ladies, this accent is so good. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, gonna give man. us a little snippet of it or no? Um, man, I don't even, I'm trying. To I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, you're putting me on the spot. Don't you, don't you want a second season? Give us, I'm give us the music. And then way the sun blasts, something like that. That's how it goes. But nice. I'm a sneak peek. I have to so this like the is this program. is the only Spanish I know. I mean, song wise, my mom always used to sing "Besame Mucho." Besame, 
Bésame mucho. Wait, that's the wrong key. Bésame, bésame mucho. This is the part where I make up. Como se fue la esta noche la última vez. It's kind of not right. <laughs> hey, but you have, a, you have a good accent, Kat. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bésame mucho. Que tengo miedo. I don't know what the lyrics are. I make it up. Okay, what was your favorite episode of the whole show? Uh, I, that's a hard one. I would say my favorite episode, you, you're going to answer this question too. My favorite episode was probably, I, I, it's so easy to say the finale because it's just like everything kind of culminates at the very end. But I did, there's, I don't know what number it was, but the, the scene that I loved shooting was, uh, I remember being very pregnant, was with Eddie and I was eating the cake. We were having this argument and um, oh, Eddie oh, yeah. was dealing with his breakup with Summer. Mm. And um, I joined in at the end, like, you know, I didn't love that scene just because of the cake, okay? I mean, it wasn't, <laughs> that was definitely a plus, but I loved the dialogue in that scene. It was a real back and forth. Um, yeah, it was the last awesome. scene we shot. It was just a, it was a great, a great moment in the show mm -hmm. where you could kind of see that there was like a little bit of a spark between uh, my character and Eddie's character, Bo. Um, yeah. So Old I liked that sort of foreshadowing. Yeah. Definitely for season two, right? <laughs> for season two, we're keeping our yeah. fingers crossed. Go ahead. What's your, can you think of a favorite for you? Yeah, I think my favorite is episode nine where I was like sick and I had to talk in that dumb little Oh my gosh, accent. yeah. And I got to sing in Spanish too, actually, which was fun. That's right, uh, you did. <laughs> but I know I just loved it because it was like a challenge to have to do that, that like sick accent because it's hard to talk like you're sick when you're not. You know? Right. And the script, the, the script was like, um, everything was sort of phonetically written out for you, just how yeah. to do it. I remember thinking like, oh, I'm so glad I don't have to I'm act. I'm not going to eat my soup. I'm not going to eat my, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you did it, you did it amazingly well. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. Accents. Speaking of accents. Who had the hardest time getting the accent down? Oh, who would you think had the hardest time? I would say, I mean, this is kind of we're like gonna be are we talking behind them behind their back now <laughs> well first of all they're children right yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> and you play a child but you're not a child anymore facts you do look you still look like you're about 15 years old but yeah i'll take it i'll take it. yeah you just stay looking i have to use a filter to look like i'm a child so just keep it pulled back you know what i'm saying you look great um, <laughs> well thank you i can thank agnes the filter for this <laughs> agnes agnes the filter lady um, I actually know who this girl is. She created a filter. She lives in London. Um, wow, cool. <laughs> but I, well, I didn't struggle with the accent as much because I did a show on Broadway called Waitress, and my character already had a pretty southern accent. It was a little bit softer and not as high pitched as uh, my character Bailey. I, yeah. uh, as you see, the episodes go on. My my accent gets a little bit thicker and a little bit higher pitched, and um, so. But I had a, I had a head start with with that. I would say. You know, I would say did such a good job is our little Chloe. She, she did a great job. I mean, our, her real name is Piper in real life. She did such, I mean, she's our littlest, youngest one. And she did such an amazing job with, uh, with that accent. She killed, killed it. Yeah. Yeah. But everyone had to work kind of for the first few weeks, had to work pretty hard. Yeah, we had to work pretty hard. And I mean, for me, like I grew up in Georgia, so I kind of knew the accent. I grew up around it. So I was, it was pretty easy. Yeah, you did it. It was easy for you too. You know, we can say we could say Eddie struggled the most. He's yeah, next slide. Eddie, he struggled the most. That guy, dude. That guy. <laughs> were there any deleted scenes that didn't make the cut that you wanted? Yes, there were deleted scenes, and I, I as I was rambling at the very beginning before I had you go live, Ricardo, I wasn't mm -hmm. fully explaining it. But the the pilot, the first episode, actually started with me. Um, well, it started a couple different ways, but in the sh short version of the story, it started with me driving in the car. And I was crying hysterically and I was singing crazy, I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. Cause that's what's on the radio. And then she gets frustrated, she starts crying. She changes the song on the radio, the, the station. And it's uh, turns to, into the Kelly Clarkson song with doesn't kill you, makes you strong. And she thinks she's talking to God and God is sending her a message. And she's feeling good about her new breakup and that she's gonna be okay. And then the car goes like this and it stops right in front of this ranch. And that's <laughs> how the pilot originally kind of started. Well, yeah. you back here. I hear my dog. My little blind, blind and deaf dog. Uh -oh. um, 
-hmm. poor thing is really running into walls these days. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's the deleted scene. I don't really know why Karen, she's on here, uh, why they ended up not going with that. Like Netflix just wanted to get straight to the point. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, somebody said country comfort is like, uh, what did they say? Is the sound of music meets Reba and it's everything. Yeah, that's what we like to hear. That's what we love to hear. <laughs> what was the most difficult for you, most difficult scene for you guys to do? What was, what was the most difficult scene for you to do, for you personally? Uh, I know what mine was. Well, you go or, first and I'll think about it. You can think about it. Yeah. The most difficult one was, I think, is episode... I never, I never know the numbers, but it was with me and Chloe, the little character, Chloe, the youngest girl, Piper. And I think it was one of the second episodes we shot. Mm -hmm. So it's the second or third episode. And it was that, that, that whole episode where um, I took the little girl to the bar, took Chloe to the bar. And I had, I was really struggling with the guitar in the case. And it was just, there was so much dialogue. That was probably the most dialogue I had. And we, Chloe Piper did an amazing job um but she's so little you know and she had a lot to remember too so mm -hmm. it was just that particular scene with the guitar and the mama's guitar being stolen and it with the car the guitar was there the guitar wasn't there it was just very um it was a little complicated yeah yeah that's, that's definitely something? hard scene. yeah i thought you know honestly going back to episode nine with the accent but like what well, uh, i think the hardest one i mean i don't know i felt like most scenes in the show i was able to get but the one that I think was more of a challenge was definitely the sick voice, but also singing in Spanish with the sick voice. And then because also remember the truth, like it wasn't working the timing with the track or whatever. Right. So I ended up singing it live, which was really cool, but. Oh, it was so much better. And it worked out. It worked out really well. So. Yeah. Yeah. But it was definitely, I was like kind of nervous at that moment because I was like, oh man, am I gonna be able to get this live? Luckily I practiced it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, so I, um, I've noticed you have a lot of followers on your Instagram account, <laughs> like a lot of followers. Where did you get all these followers? Is this from your Malibu beach days? Is this, is this where it comes from? Actually, it comes from my Nickelodeon days back on my Nickelodeon show called School of Rock. Oh, so oh, yeah, a, lot of the, a lot of the peeps in, in the comments will probably remember me from School of Rock, but definitely School of Rock and Malibu Rescue, I think. Wow. Sure. And how many seasons did you do Malibu Rescue for? Malibu Rescue. So we did a movie. And then we did an eight episode series and then we did another movie. Wow. So yeah, it was really, it was, man, that was one of my favorite. And favorite do you feel like your, uh, your fans digging our, digging our new show? Yeah. I don't, I, they love it. They love it. So awesome. we guys, we need a season two, right? Why don't you guys write in the comments season two, por favor. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Tag Netflix. Tag Netflix. Tag Tag Netflix. Netflix. What do you love about Bailey and Tuck the most? Well, it's a slightly inappropriate, um, <laughs> Tuck just, you know, can't help himself. Tuck you, know, you guys help. should know this about Ricardo. He is the nicest, most polite, um, <laughs> ethical, moral guy you could possibly meet. He's just <laughs> such a sweet, you know, he loves his you. fiance, you know, yes. and it's so funny, right? As a character, you get to play this guy who's just like, you know, really digging himself, loves I his know. guns, loves to wear tight Hilarious. shirts. He uh, loves makes, those tight shirts, for sure. Makes inappropriate comments. So how oh, yeah. does that feel to, to play something so opposite from yourself? I mean, it's it's definitely interesting because it's like, like you said, it's almost the opposite of who I am in real life. But it's cool because I think that's the beauty of being an actor, you know, getting to play a character that you're not. But it's fun. It's really fun. I think it's just a, he's just a funny character. He's definitely a lot of comedic relief yeah. moments. And like I you think said, Tuck is such a funny relationship between Tuck and Cat, for sure. Yeah, Tuck is harmless, but you know, he just- yeah. uh, He's crushing, he's, he's crushing hard, you know? <laughs> that's right. And he when, it, when he crushes, he doesn't hold back. He does not hold back. On anybody no. he's crushing on, right? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say was your most embarrassing moment during filming? Mm. Embarrassing moment. Embarrassing moment? Well, I embarrass myself every day, so <laughs> you can yeah, clearly too, see honestly. that as I try me to too. get onto a live. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> And didn't even show up on time. How about that? Um, <laughs> Man, I can't even. Let me try to think. Embarrassing moment. I feel like luckily I didn't have the, any embarrassing moments that I can yeah. think of. Or maybe there are some and I just blocked it out of my head. Yeah, I always block things out of my head. Yeah. Let's go to the next question. Um, what was the funniest moment that you had acting in the show? 
Well, I was very funny. Every moment was funny. I mean, I got big laughs all the time. They never yeah. had to. They never had to do retakes because you know, <laughs> look, season two. People were saying season two, four, four, four. I love it. Um, yes, guys, we love it. My funniest moment. I feel like my funniest moment was when we actually had audience members. Right, like that was that was the only bummer. We were so grateful to come back because we just felt like, thank God, we get to come back to finish this great show that we love. Um, but the thing I missed, I don't speak for you, I just really missed that, the live shows, because there's just such an energy to it. Um, totally. Yeah. Yeah. You get so hyped, like, right before, and you're like, oh, here we go. And then it's like the energy, like, you can see it in the scenes, actually. Yeah, you, we had to really rely on Karen and the other writers to, to um, give us the energy behind the scenes, right? Because the audience gives you that, that naturally. Yeah. Um, I like seeing all these at Netflix season two country comfort. It's really great. <laughs> what was your audition process like? My audition process? Oh, okay. This is fun. Um, oh, my baby's crying. Oh, I love it. Oh. <laughs> um, my audition process was I went in on an audition just like anybody else. Wilma, what was your audition process more importantly? Look at Wilma. Oh, <laughs> hey, Wilma. So you're my audition dream. process was, uh, it was up to, what, apparently what Karen had said was that she had already found the role for Tuck, right? But so because I did Netflix's Malibu Rescue, um, Brooke Kessler, she's the, the head of family right. uh, at Netflix. She was like, Karen, you got to audition this kid. So I just got, I just got an audition through my manager. Like I didn't even know what was going on behind the scenes. But so I went and, and I prepared a, a song. I tried to get like as like the coolest song you think on the guitar that had a lot of finger picking and stuff. So I, you know, show off the guitar skills and I went and I prepared the scene and I remember seeing Karen. I, I honestly, I didn't even, I couldn't recognize her because the room was so dark, but I, I went in and I, it was, it just went really well. I killed the scene and I played the guitar oh, and callback. And then I actually it wasn't even a callback. It was just straight to the testing, which is awesome. So, right. So I went, on, on, <laughs> a, I went on a regular audition just like you, but I, I didn't have any, I'd never had any experience with Netflix before. So they didn't, they weren't paying much attention to me. Um, and Karen had already seen somebody that she really liked for this role. They were, I think, pretty close to making an offer. And I came in and changed the whole thing. Really oh, the show. flipped it upside its head. And, uh, <laughs> No, and then I had to go back, I think, for another audition. And then I finally came in to work with all the kids and the prospective children. You were one of them, but and Jamie was one of them. But there were other kids that <clears throat> didn't make the cut. But that was kind of my uh, my test. And then mm -hmm. I was shooting a little part on a, another movie in, in, uh, what, what's, in Georgia. And I was in my trailer on a lunch break, and they called me and said that I got it. It was so cool. But you know what's That's funny awesome. is that I keep telling this this story, I was so, I don't know what I was thinking, but I didn't know Netflix did sitcoms. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I thought this was just like a single camera, um, regular comedy, you know, it would take like 15 hours to shoot a day. And they call me said, it's going to series. It's not just a pilot. I'm like, what my mind, we're shooting 10 episodes and <clears throat> it's not just um, a regular comedy. It's a sitcom. You're gonna have a live audience every day. So my mind was like blown because I hadn't, I had no idea that wow. I was entering this kind of a kind of a TV show. Pleasant pretty, surprise, right? Totally pleasant yeah. surprise. Something different that I'd never done before. Mm -hmm. Hey, but you but, killed it. You, I felt like you were a natural. I, I mean, just judging from how we work together, I thought you would have done a billion sitcoms. Oh, thanks. I did a pilot once for uh, NBC, I think it was, for a sitcom, but it wasn't, <clears throat> it didn't get picked up. So it was just one, it was like two weeks. But I think doing Broadway, I think having theater experience definitely think it, that helps a lot right yeah definitely definitely i even remember like from my theater days back in high school like it definitely helps yeah because the audience you just like like you said it's you the, energy. the energy yeah yeah what other country stars would you like to have on season two? Oh, well um it's funny i was in cabo for he did you hear what the question was what other yeah, country yeah, stars would you like to have on your so I was in Cabo for my birthday. We have a friend who has a place there. So they let us come and I brought a couple friends. And um, our friend's boyfriend, he is Garth Brooks's manager. 
So it was kind of a running joke the entire couple days that we were in Cabo because my husband kept trying to get me to play Bailey in real life. Um, <laughs> so Karen said she wanted me for the role of um, Tuck, actually, originally, just so everyone oh, knows. Perfect. Originally, uh, I was going for the role of Tuck. And I actually was going for Bailey. For Bailey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so anyway, back to my birthday weekend. Yeah, they, this, this, this great guy is a manager for Garth Brooks. And so the entire time I kept playing Bailey and trying to get him to manage me, basically like <laughs> Bailey has no manager, right? So yeah, uh, Garth, so now in my, my head, I would love to have Garth Brooks as like a, a cameo. Wouldn't that be great? That's awesome. That's awesome. That'd be cool. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, I think for me, Florida Georgia line or Josh Turner. Those are the guys. That Ooh, like, Josh, or, I'm, I'm a big yeah. fan of Josh Turner. Or Rascal Flats. I mean, come on. I know. Well, we did cover, for those of you who have not finished the show, and you should, we cover Rascal Flats song in the final episode, and it's pretty great. It's pretty awesome. It turned out pretty awesome. If you guys haven't seen Country Comfort, you need to watch it, and you need to watch it all the way through, guys, and then watch it again. Poor because, poor. <laughs> because you're going to enjoy it. How much input do you get in the song choice? None. We get zero input. Zero. Karen, Karen no. who's watching. <laughs> if we get a second season, I'll tell you what. I'm going to have lots of input for Karen. I'm going to say, you sure you want to go with that song choice, Karen? <laughs> you know, they talk about, you know, first season, all the actors are really nice. They're so kind. Second season, it goes downhill. Second season, everyone becomes a diva, you know? Yeah. Karen knows that she's preparing for it. Um, we don't get that much song choice, but Karen is pretty pretty great. So I'm sure if if we all had some sort of some sort of ideas, she'd be open to it. She's rolling her eyes right now. But I mean all the all the songs that we've done anyways have been awesome. So they have been great. I trust them with the song choices. And we did well, we did an original song too. I think that was mm -hmm. the one I sang. I sang it on uh, the um, Kelly Clarkson show. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the favorite song? What's your favorite song to cover? My favorite song? Well, uh, probably the God Bless the Broken Road was my favorite song that we covered. Uh, also, yeah. just because I loved when all of us sang together and, you know, it was just, that was, that was yeah. a special moment. But I, I still, my favorite song is the original song that I sang because it's, it's fun to do a different song. I've been here before. I know I'm yeah. going to do this town. Sure. I know you're a bad boy. I see you hang around. You know which song I actually liked a lot too? Um, Boone's original song to you. That's a great, that was a good song. Um, that was a good song. And he has such a, such like a awesome, I don't know, I love his voice. Maybe you do. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you don't. You do. da, 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 yeah. da, da. Yeah. Uh, Maren Morris would be a great addition on my little cami. We've got to get, if we're going to get a second season, we've got to really blow it out and have lots of, lots of cameos. Oh, yeah. I mean, Leanne Rhymes was awesome too. Though. Well, Leanne Rhymes was our, she kicked it off pretty amazing. Yeah. That was actually another one of the questions, but I was saving it. What was it like to work with Leanne freaking Rhymes? Oh, yeah. What was it like, right? To, what was it like to work with Leanne freaking Rhymes? Well, so, I mean, I'm sure, Ricardo, you're a lot younger than I am, but I remember when Leanne became, I'm going to save some of this for when Eddie, maybe Leanne will be in the background somewhere. She'll pop on for <laughs> our life. Uh, I remember when Leanne hit like hit the the u.s market as a beautiful young country artist and uh i was a huge fan when she sang blue oh so lonesome for you mm -hmm. i'll just keep going why can't you be blue <laughs> over me um she was awesome right like i mean she's yeah she's i, I she's think it would be great if we had her come back on for another episode. oh yeah for sure Maybe she, maybe like somehow you get around her blocking you or some other crazy thing that you need. Exactly. Her for. <laughs> yes, there's a, there's a, there's a line in the show where um, I mentioned how Leanne blocked me. We're no longer friends. <laughs> that's pretty classic. I think that's a common, <laughs> common Bailey trait. She just yeah. becomes a little bit too much for people. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said, can you speak French, please? I'm sorry. I don't know how to speak French. Je ne sais pas parler français. That means I don't know how to speak French. Oh, but I was going to say, you speak French too? Jeez. <laughs> no. I see a lot I of like a Scorpion fans on here and um, hashtag Scorpion. I'm, yeah, this is a show that I was on, too. Ricardo, for my Scorpion fans. I'm going to just address yes. them because I think it's um, so nice that I have really 
really strong. I don't talk about Scorpion that much because it was like four years ago now that it's over, but uh, people love it and they're super passionate about it and they say hashtag save Scorpion, but I don't know, it's never coming back. I, I love all of you, but Scorpion is never coming back. It was on CBS. I had nothing to do with the departure of the show. It, it, it got canceled after four seasons. It was a really great run and I'm sorry, I've got nothing else for you. It's, it's, <laughs> there's no hope for it to come back. It's just oh, the way man. it goes. It's so sad. Season, season, season five, people are asking me. You know what, does have hope? What, what does have hope is country comfort. Country comfort, And that's guys. what brings us here today, folks. Last question is, Last what question. would you like to see happen if the show gets picked up for the second season? Okay, what would I like to see happen um, for season two? Have you thought about this at all? I mean, I would just love, for me personally, for Tuck's character, I love, because, you know, actually, going back to that question about a, a scene that didn't make the cut, there was one scene in the fi in the season finale where I get to, like, I go off on Boone for abandoning you again. So we got to see, like, Oh, that. they cut that? Yeah, they cut that scene out Aww. because of time. And I thought, oh, I really wanted that scene to right. be in there. But I would love to see in season two definitely more of those deeper layers of Tuck instead of just the, you know, the cocky attitude, going for the girl all the time. You want a little more depth to Tuck is yeah, what you're saying. Sure. Yeah. But well, season two, definitely that, I think that'll happen. I think you'll get that. I think everyone will have a little bit more grit to them. Yeah. Um, I know people are still writing about Scorpion. Um, I will read some of these comments when, when we, I play this back. So as I like, I like reading the fan comments. It's important to read them. Um, for me, I guess, I love I, I love the rants. I love the Bailey rants. So we'll see mm -hmm. more of that. But I think back to the question of who would you like to have guests on the show? I would just love to see more guests um, coming in and creating some some more obstacles for Bailey because you know obstacles are always going to be part of Bailey's um, life, right? That she just kind of for sure. That's just kind of what she manifest so i don't know just uh maybe a little we'll have boone back for sure right mm -hmm. like you'll have to come back and create some problems but you know i don't know if she's gonna keep him around or or what but i would like to see more um cameos from some great country artists and i don't know it's gonna be interesting to see what happens it totally be interesting um well ricardo to thank you for joining my live thank you so much for having me kat and um, yeah, we, hopefully I'll be seeing you in a few, less than less than a few months, hopefully very soon. For sure. And I'm um, glad we got trying to keep the word out for our show. Yes. And Watch I'm gonna, Country Comfort, guys. I'm going to get Eddie to join me now. All righty, take care. Thanks, Kat. Ricardo. Bye. Take care. All right, guys, now I'm gonna look for Mr. Eddie Cyprian. <laughs> Right, I know, but he's probably on, so let's just see if he'll join now. I sent him a request. And so Eddie, so Mr. Eddie Cibrian is the our our male lead star of the show. He and I have um never worked together, but we've known of each other for country comfort food from Trevor. So we're just gonna wait for Eddie for a few minutes before he joins. He plays Bo. Yeah, Bailey and, and Bo should get married. That probably would be a good little storyline, but maybe like 10 episodes from now, 10 seasons from now, I mean. <clears throat> Do you think he sees my... I just texted him. Okay. So Eddie is going to join us. I love I have no connection with country. Yeah, I don't have any... So I'm a girl who grew up in the Valley. I don't have any country in me at all, but I just except for that I love country music. And I definitely don't think I was the um, natural person unable to join. Let's try this again. I don't think I was the the first person that would come to mind with, um, hold on guys, I'll get Eddie again. Because, you know, I have no country roots or anything like that. But again, like I said, I love country music. Hi, Eddie. Ah, there we go. Hello. How are you? Hold on, hold on, I'll turn this up. Hi. Hey, so should we do this in a country accent? Well, if, if you want. I don't know. <laughs> I think I forgot mine already. Um, I know. Mine's a little rusty, too. That's it. Awesome. You sound all right. I sound okay. So, you know, we're both basically L.A. Valley kids. Are you a Valley boy? Yeah. 
Born and um, raised. We're both. So how did we both end up on a show that takes place in in Nashville, in the South? And uh, well, it's because, you know, it's called We're Actors, you know? That's right. Yes, exactly. I mean, look, there's very few of us that are born and raised actually here in the Valley uh, that it's, are in this industry. True. When you meet in this industry, when you meet someone, they say, oh, where are you from? And then you say, I'm from the Valley from here in Los Angeles. And they're, they just, the look on their face is like, what? How are yeah. you? How are you? Yeah. There are people who actually are born here and grow up here and not as many. There's a lot of transplants here, but we are, we are unusual. Yes, very much so. Hey, welcome to the live. <laughs> We're here to talk about all things country comfort. Oh, good. I'm getting well, better we at this. To. Yes. Yeah, I'm getting better at this hosting thing. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit of where you are right now, Eddie. Well, <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm oh. leaving tomorrow, but we're not going to say we're not going to say oh. where I'm going. No, you only but, say where you've been, not where you where you are. Of course, exactly. Yeah. Um, You're going I just to. Got a... back, I just got back from my yearly physical. Oh, how, all how is good. That go? You know, that's all fine. I, I'm I'm happy to report. I'm okay. That yeah. sounds great. Well, you're all, you got the A-OK -okay to do some traveling. I did. I got the Eddie's going to go, go to a lay in the sun and just, you know, have a nice, enjoyable time. You yeah. just had your, you just celebrated your 10 year anniversary with your lovely wife who made I an appearance did. on our show. I did. I know. Yes, that was nice. Um, and she, she wants to make another appearance on the show. It's what she's saying to me. So we'll see. She's not going to make an appearance on this show because she's not here right now. Oh, but, darn. I was like, I yeah, I know. On our yeah, live. That would have been great, too. Second, no. yeah. My dog's here. <laughs> My dog. Well, you know Wilma's here. Oh, yeah, Wilma. I know. Oh, <laughs> do Wilma's, I know. Wilma's always around. Eddie, tell us a little bit about Wilma. Well, Wilma, you know, does not like to be left alone. Although Wilma, I don't think Wilma can see, right? Wilma can't see anymore. Yeah. Or, Wilma's or, my dog. Or hear, really, that well, right? She can hardly hear, which is why she can bark her head off. Yeah. Because she so, can... But she knows. Yeah, there she is. She senses Aww. when you're not in the room. Somehow yeah. she senses. It. Yeah, you and Eddie got, to, uh, Eddie got to know that pretty well um, when he and I were sharing a wall. You we were sharing dressing rooms, and I came up, and you were very polite. And I was like, oh, was she okay? And you're like, she was pretty much barking the entire time. Yeah, yeah. I was... She barks until you come back. I but know. she's sweet. She's getting Look better. better. She's gotten, she, she got better, though. She got used to the space in her blindness. Well, see, look, at least now, you know, if we come back for a season two, it might be a crying baby, <laughs> I hear, instead. That is true. It might be. So, you know, you're just winning in all, all, all directions. <laughs> just froze. Yeah, you, you, you had a yep. yapping dog, and now it's going to be a crying baby. You know, Eddie, you're a big star. You could actually, you could actually tell people to, <laughs> to sh switch your dressing room. It's not, I'm sure it wouldn't be a big deal. Oh, I did. Trust me. That was the first thing I did. It didn't work. I'm not that big of a star. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have a couple questions for you, for us. Hit, hit us with it, Caesar. Do you think there's something in the stars for Bailey and Bob? What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, you know, there, there, there possibly could be. I don't know why my, my phone keeps doing that. Sorry. Um, oh, looks good from here. Um, we will see. I mean, obviously, I think that they do have a they do have some sort of connection, uh, as you can see. Um, well, it starts I mean, to we, really progress towards the end, right? Yeah, yeah, and then it kind of like um, you know solidifies a little bit at the, the last episode, um, which was nice. Um, but you know, we'll see. You know, uh, I have a feeling that maybe way down, way down the road, that there might be something. Right, which is you know why we just need to pray for a second season. Be Oops, I think I. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I don't know if it's, is it, what's going on here? Well, you're just freezing a little bit, but I can still see you. Oh, you can? And hear okay. you fine, yeah. I'm frozen though. Um, it's probably the filter that I'm using. It's taking up all the, uh, <laughs> the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi juice. It's very important, this filter that I'm using right now. Uh, uh, there we go. Now you're back, I'm, or at least I'm back. Um, I just naturally have sparkles everywhere I go. I was wondering, I was like, I'm, I'm looking, maybe that's what I'm trying to go. I want that filter. Where is it? And yeah, I can't you look find great. It. Now it's only yours. I just had a baby. I need as many filters as I can get. I can, you know, for the next year, I can blame everything on a baby, right? On, on baby? Yes. Yeah. Like, oh, I was late. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I didn't remember my lines. Oh, I can't fit into my pants. I got a good year of that, yeah. right? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I'd say seven months. You're, you might, you're stretching it with a year, I think. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll remember that when I can't fit into my pants a year from now. Okay. What was it 
What was your favorite scene to film together? Well, I was on the live earlier with Ricardo and I said that my favorite scene to shoot with, with you, well, my favorite scene actually to shoot was, uh, it was one of the last scenes of the night. It was a Friday night, I think. And it was the scene where you're eating your cake. You're all upset about uh, your relationship with Summer. <laughs> and I truly loved that cake so much. It was a, wasn't it like a paleo cake or something like that? It was yeah. so good. I, I, that's not, I swear that's not the reason why I love that scene. I just loved the dialogue. The dialogue was really great back and forth. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was like a new dimension between the two characters. There was like a little bit of a jealousy flirtation going on. So yeah, yeah. That scene no, I, I agree. I, I love that scene too. Um, and I loved it at first because of the cake as well, because the cake was so good, like you said, the but then so we, we did it to like, I don't know, maybe three, four times. Yep. And then by the end, it was it was no more cake. I, yeah, I mean, well, I, so, I, you know, they let me bring home like a huge thing of that cake. A did, huge oh, did you? Oh, yeah. really? Oh, they let me no. bring home like a huge. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I, I don't need that. I, I'm, I'm not going to eat it. I, I think I've got about 10 to 15 pounds to lose, right? Post baby, <laughs> which hopefully won't take me a year to lose. But I would say a good three pounds of that is from that cake that night. I mean, oh, I ate that cake, cake all weekend long. Uh, I, got, I, I, didn't, I couldn't eat cake for probably six months after that. I mean, that's how much cake. I mean, they made me stuff my face. I mean, big, big mouth. You were actually really eating the cake a lot. I was really eating the cake, yeah. I just, I I just really ate it at it. the end. Yeah. See, they say never work with, you know, kids, right, or animals. And we have both of those on the show, and they're fantastic. Right. I say never work with cake. That's right. Never. Because if you got to stuff your face <laughs> with it every single take, it's not good. I know. You had to yeah. eat a lot of cake. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eddie, one of, the, one of my favorite things that I learned about you, because you know, during the, sh the, the, the run of our season, we actually didn't really get to know each other that well. We were kind of just uh, very professional, just doing our jobs, showing up, saying our lines, and hitting. The, or we were always racing to the cars. We were always racing. Our cars are parked right next to each other. We were always racing to see who could get in their car first. And that was no indication of like us not enjoying the job. It was just, you know. We're very busy people, and um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Look, you know, we we had other things we had to do. Right. And so it was we didn't kind get... of, It's not very often you can you know you can go to work and then be done by two p.m. and yeah. and go and do those go, things and and you go take do advantage things. of it. Right. Yeah. So that was the beauty of the show. But um, one of my favorite things I learned about you is that you were, <laughs> for the people who are watching, you were in a boy band. You know, I'm never gonna let this go, right? <laughs> you were in a boy band like back yeah. in the day. I saw a picture of you recently of you and your lovely wife, Leanne, mm -hmm. when you were probably in your boy band days. Oh yeah. <laughs> you gotta tell me more about this. You gotta tell us, tell people watching, you gotta tell us more about this, this boy band. You know, this was like, this was like late nineties when boy bands were, you know, but really big. You, you sing, you can sing. You, you No, really... I can't sing. We all know I can't sing. That's why I'm not going to sing on the show. I mean, they're going to try. But they're going to try. It's not going to work. It's not going to I think you're lying sound. about that. I mean, no. listen, you're a beautiful man. So, yes, the boy band thing that goes perfectly with a very handsome man. But you had to have some singing talent. So, well, no, you know that, you know, like back in the day, like Boys to Men, a lot of the boy bands had the one guy that could that sing really talks. well. No, that talks. The one guy that can sing really, really well always. Right. And then the one guy that talks, that, you know, during the breakdown. That was or, you. Or the bridge, you know, you Wait, know the musical you, stuff That was playing, you? That was you? Cut. I was the talker. Oh, you, you were know. like, Yo, Baby, baby. I miss you so much. Uh, I love you, know, you so much. I love you. I love, uh, you know, I love everything about you. Can we just, you know, let's just make this work and make it happen. And then wow. it's music swells. And then the singer, the real singer comes on and just, slays it blows them away that's so that's, you were that's you were like the the talker that was the talker did yeah. you have the shirt like the 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 white shirt with it open as well with always. the wind blowing oh yeah always always yeah and glistening you know you always have to glisten a little bit yeah yeah it was like a so. little bit hot so you had the fan blowing yeah of course yeah Somebody yeah, asked, yeah. And so, it doesn't say in the show but what's your favorite go-to karaoke song yeah do you have a favorite go-to karaoke song oh uh Hmm. I don't know. Come on, but... Eddie. I can see you with your whiskey. Getting well, whiskey. you can see singing La Vida Loca or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that goes well with whiskey, How about, by the way. She bang, she bang. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, baby, when yeah. she moves, she moves. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have one because I, I can't sing. I, I would never get up there unless there was a lot of alcohol involved. You know, I'd get up there and do something. But other than I'm that, I'm still not convinced that you can't that you don't sing at all. But um, we'll see about that because Karen, I know she's gonna she's gonna have you break out. I hear my baby crying. I'm so sad. Um, what other Netflix what, shows do you watch? Oh, what other Netflix shows do we watch? I mean, everything. What Netflix don't I watch? Um, yeah, um, there was I saw a meme actually once during the pandemic that said because you know like all that we had to do was like watch shows and stuff so everyone was just staying home and I saw a meme that said uh, I finished Netflix oh right yeah, and yeah. I watched everything yeah I don't know what's the most recent thing I watched is that really um, that's kind of Ozark cool. have you seen Ozark so that's really good yeah that's really good. really good yeah very good that's very so different from uh, Country Comfort very very different you know a lot of people are asking about season two yeah, will there be a season two? Will there be a yeah, season will two? there be a season two? You know? Well, that's the big question. I mean, we've only had like 300 million people watch our show, but we still don't know if uh, Country Comfort is yeah, what a Yeah, it's a weird little algorithm. <laughs> I know, look, what we do know, right, Kat, is that they're going to make a decision probably in the next couple of weeks, um, yeah. is what they said. They, they, wanted want to give, to they wanted to give it a month and kind of see how many people, you know, kind of found the it. Word. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, and truthfully, though, you know, what what I love about the show when I first read it, it was like, you know, how heartfelt it was, how real and it yeah. was just so heartwarming. Uh, and I feel like every single person who has watched it loves it. They, they love it. They love they feel the same way. It's a family yeah. show. Finally, they say a family show. We love it. We love everything about this show. We want another yeah. you know, season. This yeah, and that's, that. and, that's the great thing is that younger people can watch it and older people can watch it, too. It kind of is a very broad um, yeah. A broad type of show. And there's not, you know, look, that I don't know many shows where people can do that, you know, that the whole family can sit down and actually yeah. watch it together. Um, and so, look, we, I know we're very excited to do a season two if, uh, if we get that opportunity. But I think that we have to give it to the people now. They have to spread the word. Okay. You, know, do you know, did you see what they did at the GameStop uh, at, I mean, uh, stock. Oh, yeah, the stock market? Right? GameStop was, you know, nothing. And then the people got behind it and said, you know, know. we're going to make a difference. And so we're talking to the back. people. So you got to give it to the people now. They got to, you know, it's up to them to spread these these next it's two totally weeks. are so vitally important, I think, that if they spread the word and they get other people to watch all, you know, right. watch all ten episodes all the way through, get their friends to do it there, you know, whoever. And they, the more people that watch these next, you know, two weeks, I think it's going to be an easy, easy decision for yep. Netflix, you know? Totally. So I think uh, give it to the people, right, Kat? Give it to the That's... people. I, Ted, um, Ted Sarandos is actually a, a friend of my husband's. And mm -hmm. this is a cool kind of omen that uh, our first 24 hours that we debuted, which was like a month ago, um, he, we were number five or something in the, the U.S. So it was so cool. But he, um, he was just giving us a thumbs up and saying it was really great news that the show was already doing so well so we just need like you know a few more weeks to give it i think a we push. need that final yeah i agree i think we need that final little push right yeah. these next uh, couple of weeks for people just to you know just, just to, to find it because it's such a, a no-brainer yeah it really is yeah um, um i have to so just like i have to pee so uh -oh. um i gotta go soon let's ask one more question because i can't hold my bladder anymore i just had a baby you see how that works i just blame everything on having a baby People want you to talk about what it was like breaking your hand, breaking your mind. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why I want to talk to you about. Um, this is the question that we get asked all the time, you especially. But what was it like working with Leanne freaking Rhymes? <laughs> it was amazing, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah, it, we, um, you know, what was great is that, that that happened basically when we came back from, you know, being shut down. Um, and so we, we weren't able to have anybody come to set, like nobody. Nobody. Like you couldn't yeah. have your husband come. I couldn't have Leanne come. Nope. Yeah. They were like very strict. With and we went from such like a high too of like having live audiences and so many people could come on Friday nights and it was like a big party every Friday night to shoot, right? Yep. It was the best. It's the best. That, that type of atmosphere um, is just, you know, it's, you can't really match it. Um, yeah. It's so fun. And so, you know, I, when we came back, I would, you know, I told, I told Leanne, I said, sorry, you know, baby, you can't, you know, you can't come to set, I'm not allowing you to come to set. I go, the yeah. only way you're going to be able to come to set if, if you were in the show. <laughs> and so then Karen calls, goes, hey, is there any way you think Leanne would want to yes. do something? And, and I was like, yeah, I think she would. And there you go. Exactly. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun to have her there, for sure. Yeah, it was fun for, I mean, I was, I've always been a fan. And so it was totally cool for all of us to have. And she's so great. She's, 
You're, I mean, she's yeah, your wife, so yeah. you think she's great, but she was really cool. And um, I thought it was a, a great first kind of, um, and there was a great line in the, in the episode about, you say, you look just like my, my late wife, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> I know, I thought that was great. Very clever, Karen. Very clever. Very clever. Or I don't know, was that Peter? I forgot who wrote that episode. I forgot. I don't remember. I don't one. remember much. Very clever, nonetheless. Nonetheless. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, no, was, she had a good time. This was great going live with you. Thanks for joining. And uh, yes, we'll, yes. Be doing this. we'll be doing this again. Everyone keeps asking, what are you drinking, Eddie? Are you drinking something? Oh, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, something called Lagunitas. It's like a, I don't know what, what do they call it? It's, it's not alcohol. Oh, it's I think like people a, were thinking a, you were like really starting. It's called a hoppy refresher. No, it's a little too, I mean, it's not four o'clock. Well, it's four o'clock somewhere, somewhere. right? <laughs> yeah. mm. Well, I'm not drunk, but I feel drunk. So. <laughs> you're drunk with urine right now. I am. What you're drunk I with. am yeah. and uh, lack of sleep, but that's okay. It's all, again, yeah. Steve's just gonna blame everything on this poor little guy. There you go, very good. <laughs> Well, you know what? Then I think we should we should leave this to the people to go do their work. Leave this to the people. And let's, and let's get a Someone season Someone said, two save this people. live. We're definitely so, going to save this live. Don't watch the show. Yeah. Watch um, the show. Spread week. the word. Talk thank to you, you guys Sandy. all for watching. Gonna, and thank meantime, you guys all for enjoying the show. You know, all of those comments and everything. You know, yeah, we really, really appreciate, appreciate that. that. Yeah. Tag Netflix. Bye. Peace. <laughs> and now.